So I just wanted to thank you so very much for taking the time to meet with us today. We're delighted to be here and to have a conversation with you. Um, and as you know, we are very thrilled to have acquired the Silverman Fluxus collection, which is so rich in, in works made by you. And we'd like to begin today by talking a little bit about some works in that collection and, and Fluxus in okay, general. Fine. Okay, fine. Great. So we were hoping, how would you describe Fluxus to someone who doesn't know anything about it? Can you tell us a little bit about oh, Fluxus? Oh, Fluxus. Well, actually, I would say, please read my book, because <laughs> I am kind of tired of uh, speaking about Fluxus. Mm -hmm. And in the book, I wrote precisely uh, the figure of Fluxus, which were looked at from my position. Mm -hmm. Of course, Fluxus is a huge organization, and there are a lot of things which I don't know, or I didn't know. So, but... Uh, for some part of Fluxus, they could uh, figure out what it was like from my point. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the for our documents, can you state the title of your book? Well, uh, here's. And uh, we can show it. Well, <laughs> well this is my book. The title was is uh, what is Fluxus, but this title was put from the editor of the publisher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my title was uh, original title was uh, uh, being active in Fluxus or uh, living around Fluxus or something like that. But uh, since a lot of Japanese people don't know about Fluxus. They sometimes mix up Fluxus and Marx, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said so. So, uh, he chose this very simple and easy to understand, understand uh, title. Mm -hmm. And the people who combined daily life and art, mm -hmm. it's a subtitle. Mm -hmm. And so, I wrote a lot of things about Flux, about my experience with Fluxus. Mm -hmm. So I would like to say, please read my book. And if you don't understand the Japanese, please ask uh, your friend who can read Japanese and also translate it in, into English. <laughs> so this is my lazy way. But after <laughs> 50 years, you know, I talked a lot about Fluxus for the people uh, who wants to write a graduation thesis or uh, to write books. So I decided to write this book and present this to them. <laughs> I, I really liked your original title or one of your ideas for the title, Living Around Fluxus. Yes, I think that's, that's right. Very yes, beautiful. that's right. Um, and so we're very happy to have the book too learn all about mm -hmm. um, your thoughts about Fluxus. Would you be willing, though, to tell us how you first learned about Fluxus? Well, um, in 1963, I attended a concert held in Tokyo. And in that con it was a, a rather popular uh, contemporary music concert. But I met Pike, uh, actually, uh, my friends uh, introduced me to Pike and we started talking. Mm -hmm. Pike asked me what I was doing. Then I talked to him about the endless box which I was making that time and about the idea of uh, action poems. Then he surprised and oh, you are exactly like Fruxas. Why don't you send those pieces to George Maturas? Then I asked him, what is Fluxus? Who is George Machinas? I had no idea about those things. Then Pike uh, briefly explained them, about them to me. And also he recommended me to uh, read a uh, music magazine because uh, it will have a report of the symposium in which uh, Pike talked a lot about Fluxus. So I read it and 
I understood uh, the outline of Fluxus. I thought it was a very huge organization. It sounds like some fat uh, megalomaniac. <laughs> 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 that one part of George, <laughs> actually. And in addition to the, the music magazine where you saw the, the symposium um, where Pike participated, did you see any other uh, Fluxus publications at that time? Yes, I on? remember uh, probably after that concert, uh, Toshi Ichiyanagi showed me uh, some of Black's card event card. Then, this time I was surprised uh, knowing that, that there is a man in New York <coughs> sorry, and who was doing a kind of similar art as mine and he called it event. I didn't know that word event. And I called mine uh, action poem naming actor ac action music which was developed from uh, improvisation. We pursued just uh, a sound, but uh, our performance changed little by little to action music. Then I changed into action poem. I got rid of sound part. So I, I think that's all. Just a brief cause. Okay. I'm interested in this idea of your action poem coming from the action music, and I guess that leads me to sort of a twofold question. Can you speak a little bit about what was happening in Tokyo at the time, and then maybe specifically about your involvement with Group Angaku? Okay. Okay, let me talk about uh, the motivations, the first uh, days of Group, group Ongak. Well, uh, in my case, uh, when I was in the third grade of the university, I had a chance to play uh, the piano part of Schoenberg's ensemble piece, uh, Piero Junel, at the university festival. And it was the first time for me to perform ensemble piece. So I enjoyed it so much. And immediately after the concert, uh, I wanted to perform our own music by improvisation and formed a women group together with uh, the vocalist and the flutist who had performed Piero Linnell together. But soon I found Kosugi and other few classmates uh, were also uh, playing with violin and cello, the improvisation music. So I proposed them to perform together. It was the very beginning of group Ongaku. And uh, though uh, we didn't have that name yet. Mm. When did that come, the name? Well, I think Yasuna Tone put the name just before, a few months before we had the debut concert. Well, we have no name of the group, so we should put some name <laughs> and try to think about the name. And Tone proposed it. Ongak means music. You know, it's a kind of uh, double meaning, which means that for ordinary people, our music would be anti-music. But and knowing that, we insist our music is a music of the future. So it was a kind of cynical meaning, but we loved it. So then decided, okay, group Ongak. And the climate of, in Tokyo, um, I would say we could see a two aspect. One was the most of young people wanted to destroy the old academic art and was trying to establish their own new value and new styles. And another thing was uh, well, a, a kind of fusion of genre. You know, a lot of artists from different fields, the music, architecture, poet, painter, uh, painter or sculptor, uh, get together often 
and because they were curious what's going on in other field, as an avant-garde. So, if you, if there is a section in art society, it would be whether you belong to the avant-garde group or conservative group. And the avant-garde group was one. We communicate each other very often. That was a typical uh, phenomena in Tokyo. And we were a kind of one of the center <laughs> group on Gakwa's.